In this video, I will show you how you can create your very own online grocery store. And for that, we will be using free themes and free plugins. So if you want to launch your online grocery store business or if you have an existing offline store and you want to take it online, then this video is for you. So let's start with a quick demo what we will be building here. So on the left hand side, we have the logo of our grocery store and below that we have a menu where we will showcase all the categories and below that we have a slider banner you can use this slider as a showcase for your upcoming sales and after that we have this three column section where we are showcasing different offers from different categories so that will be completely editable and after that we have a category and we will showcase three products from a particular category and below that we will list down another category and then list down three products from that particular category. And after that we have these icons to showcase the features about this store. And after that we will list down all the categories and subcategories here. So it will be easy for the visitor to jump on to any category. Then after that we have some contact details and some payment information. And below that we have our footer. And if we open any product page, let's say this one, let's open this one as well. So if we take a look at this product, we have the product title and we have the price range. And instead of a single price, we see this range because this product got multiple weight option. So depending upon what weight you choose for the product, the price will be different. If you go ahead and change the weight, the price will change accordingly. And then you will be able to add the product in cart and then click on add to cart below that we have some shipping and other details and we have some payment badges and at the bottom we have the product description and reviews and additional information so you can also collect the reviews from your customers and below that we have some related products from the same category and again we have our footer so here is another example of a product. We do not have multiple options here. We just have a product with a single price. So you can directly go ahead and select the quantity and add that to cart. And once you select your desired choice and the quantity, you just need to click on add to cart. And the and here is the message that the product is added to the cart. And here you can click on cart. These are the cart details. If you have a coupon code, you can apply that from here and then just proceed to checkout. So this is how the checkout page looks like. You just need to fill up all the details and then you can proceed to place the order. So this is what we are going to build in this tutorial. So let's dive in in our WordPress backend and let's get started. Now in order to build your online grocery store or any online business website, you need a domain and a hosting service provider where you will host all your files and stuff. Instead of telling you which domain booking website or which hosting you should use, let me explain you how I approach domain booking and hosting. So I create various niche blogs and I create websites for various clients. So the way I approach domain booking and hosting is never start with a premium hosting company. There is no doubt they provide the best service, they will give you the best value for money. But when you are building up a new online business or maybe a blog or maybe your e-commerce website, you are not expecting big traffic from the very next day. It takes time. You will do marketing, you will do SEO and, and slowly people will get to know about your website or your online business. Then you will start seeing the gradual growth of your traffic and all this thing will take from 3 months to maybe 1 year. And till that time, you don't need to invest in any premium hosting service. So what I suggest is start from the economical hosts like Bluehost, if to name some, and use them in your beginning phase. And they can easily handle some decent traffic. And once you see that your business is growing and you're getting a lot of traffic, and that is the time when you migrate your website from these economical hosting providers to some premium hosting services. And just to name some, I prefer Namecheap or maybe Cloudways. So there are a lot of options available you can choose any one of them so that's how i approach domain booking and hosting and that's what i always advise and once you go to these websites like bluehost or hostinger they will provide you a free domain for one year but make sure you compare their plans very carefully and make sure that you are getting all the things that are required to build up your online grocery store or any online business website and again the one that i use i will link in the description below you can go ahead and check them out 
So now once you book your domain and the hosting service provider, let's dive in in the WordPress backend and let's start building our online grocery store. So here we are in our WordPress backend and right now we have not installed anything. So let me show you the front end first. So this is the basic theme and nothing done yet. So first thing we will do is install our theme. So for that we go to appearance, we go to themes and from here we will click on add new and we will be installing cadence theme. So this is the cadence theme. That's, that's the one we will be using in this tutorial. All right. Now it's installed. Let's click on activate. All right. So here is a thank you message and it's prompting us to install the starter template, but we don't need that. We will be building this online grocery store from scratch. So let's close this one. All right. So once the theme is installed, let's go ahead and refresh it once. So not much change, just some CSS got updated depending upon the theme. So now the next thing is we need to add few plugins and here we will search for plugin called cadence. So we will be using cadence theme and we will be using cadence blocks for Gutenberg editor. So we'll install that. And other than WooCommerce plugin, this is the only plugin we will be using to build our entire store. We are not going to use any page builder. So we will click on activate for this one. So let's go back in the plugin section and then we will click on add new. So now we will add the WooCommerce. So here is the WooCommerce plugin. We'll click on install and then we will click on activate. So that's it. These are the two plugins that we will be installing for building up our online grocery store. Now, once you install the WooCommerce plugin, it will take you to this installation wizard for WooCommerce. So let's go ahead and fill up the details. So I'll select the country, I'll fill up some address. Even if you are a freelancer or an agency building this for your client, you don't have to select that. So we we'll click on continue. So if you want to share your data with WooCommerce to make it better for fixing bugs and other features. So I prefer not to, I'll click on no thanks. And now here you can select what type of e-commerce website you are building. So in this case, we will select food and drink. We click on continue. And we will be selling, of course, physical products. And let's click on continue again. How many products? So we will select anywhere from 10 to 100. If you're selling anywhere else, I'll select no. It's not important. You can select any option. So we click on continue. And it's asking us to improve all this stuff. So we will not do that. Let's click on continue. And which theme to choose? We will continue with our current theme. So the installation of WooCommerce is done. We are back in the dashboard of WooCommerce. Let's close this. So here we can see options for adding products, adding payment options, setting up our tax and shipping and personalizing our store. So now the installation of WooCommerce is done. Let's go ahead and do some basic settings. So we go to settings and the first tab is general where you see what the details we have entered and somehow it's showing the wrong country. So I'll select India. All right, so where you are selling, we are selling to specific countries. I'll specify it as India. If you are selling in multiple countries, you can go ahead and select the option as per your requirement. Shipping location. So we will ship to all countries we sell to. So in our case, that will be only India. So the default customer location will be the shop base address. So whatever address they will type in, that will be the base address of the customer. If you want to enable or calculate taxes, you can enable that. We will not cover that in this video. And for the currency, we will choose INR. So that's the Indian rupee. And let's click on save changes. All right. So after that, we have the option for products. These are some general settings for the products. You can go ahead and check them out. And after that, we have shipping. You can assign the shipping classes and shipping zones. Again, this topic we will cover in some other video and same goes with the payment. You can enable any payment option that you want on your store. Right now, we will enable cash on delivery so, so that we can check how the checkout page looks. After that, we have the account and privacy. So there are various things that you can check here. 
So I'll save changes and few other options that you can customize as per your requirement. So we are done with the basic settings. After that, we will go to settings. There are a few things that we need to check here. So here we have the site title and tagline. If you are using image as your logo, you can enter any SEO friendly term here. So we will update the time zone. So I will select Kolkata to set the time zone for India and just click on save changes. And after that, we will go to permanent links. And here we will select the URL for post as post name. Below that, we have an option for category base and category tag. We will leave it as it is. And for product related permanent links, we have custom base as product. So looks fine to me. So let's click on save changes. Now in the next step, we will add few products in our WooCommerce store so that we can fill up the backend and then we can use those products. And once we start building the front end of our WooCommerce store, we will get a clear feel how the website is coming up with the real data on it. So, so let's go ahead and add few products. So before we proceed, I forgot to add one more thing. Uh, we need to go to pages and we already have these pages created by WooCommerce. But if you go in the front end, this is uh, showing the blog post on the home page. So we will go add a new page and we will name it as home. So this will be acting as our home page. So I just go ahead and publish this page and I'll go back to WordPress backend and under settings, under reading, we will assign this static page as our home page. So we have selected home from here and then we just click on save changes. So now our pages are ready. Let's go and start creating products. And for that, it's better we start creating categories first so that we can assign categories while creating the product. So we go to products and then click on categories. So first goes the name of the category and second goes the URL slug. So I've just renamed the default category of WooCommerce. So that will be the default category where all the products will go first. So let's click on update. Now let's go ahead and add few more categories. So I'll come back here and let me just grab this category text. We name this category here. And after that, I'll just copy the URL slug as well and then just click on add new category. So now we have two categories. So now let me just go ahead and quickly add the other three categories. So now our categories are done. We will use these categories as menu as showing in our live site. So let's go ahead and create a menu with these categories. So for that, we go to appearance, then click on menus. And here we will create a new menu. Let's name it top menu and then create menu. So now we have a top menu here. Let's go ahead and add elements. So as we can see that we do not have WooCommerce under category. So for that, we need to go to here screen options and then select product categories. And now the WooCommerce categories will be available here. So we go ahead and select all of them, add to menu, and then we can arrange them as per our requirement. So I'll keep fruits and vegetables as first and then food, grains and oils and then others can go in any order. So let's go ahead and click on save menu. All right. So we can also assign the location. So the primary menu will be top menu. And so now our category and menu are done. Let's go ahead and start adding products. And here we have two options, create product or start import. So we will start with create products so that we can see all the steps involved. So let's go ahead and copy the data from the site that we are referring to. So let's click on this one first. So this is a simple product. We have the title, price, a short description and simple add to cart. Below that we have description. So this is called a simple product. So let me just copy the details and I'll enter the product name here. This is the product description. So we go down and copy this sample text from here and then paste it here. Along with that, you can see that this is the permanent link that is the URL of our product. So if you want, you can go ahead and edit that. So you can enter any text after that to make it a bit more SEO friendly. All right. So that's how you can edit the URLs. 
So let's go ahead and add a category. So we will choose food, grain, soils and masalas. And this is a simple product. That's where you can select it from. If you want to create variable product with an option to choose different weight or any other option. So that we will create later on. So first we will keep the simple product selected. And after that we will enter the price. So we will start with 25. Sales price will be 6. 16 inventory if you want to manage SKU and stock you can choose that I will leave it as it is after that we have the option for shipping we can create shipping classes so that a particular kind of shipping will be available will be applicable on this product so again we will not cover that in this video and if you have linked product that upsells or cross sells so you can add that as well so below that we have an option for short description let's go ahead and copy that as well now at the bottom right corner we have an option for product gallery and product image so let's go ahead and add a product image so we can upload the product image from our computer so here is the image we will select this one and you can enter the alt text or other details of image here let's assign it as our product image so for this one we will only use one image so all the details are done let's go ahead and click on publish so our first product will be live here is the url for the product let's open that in a new tab so this is how the product looks like right now so as you can see that we have a lot to do in terms of designing so we will do that in a few minutes so this is how you can add a simple product now let's go ahead and add a new product and we will go ahead and add a variable product now so let's select this oil now as you can see this is a variable product because we have a choice to select weight as different variables so we will take a look at how it is done now to add a variable product like this where we have attribute like weight and these are the attribute items so one can select any of these item and then order the product accordingly and price also gets changed depending upon what choice you select here so to create this kind of product first we need to create this attribute that is weight and then assign few values to this attribute that is 1 kg or 5 or 10 kg or maybe 25 grams something like that so if i go in our live site and go to attributes we have this attribute here weight and these are the terms or configure terms and here we have 1 kg 10 kg 250 grams and even 5 liters so you can enter as many values as you want depending upon the product you are selling so i have 5 liters and i also have 5 kg so depending upon what product i am listing i can select 1 kg or i can also select one liter here like for this one i can add one kg or i can add one liter as well so that's why i have all these attribute items under weight so that i have all the possible choices that i can add under weight attribute of any product so in the same way in our site we go to products we go to attributes and then we will just type in weight actually i have already added that just trying to show you how it is done so we will again type in weight then just click on at add attribute so this will add this attribute here and you will see this configure terms as blank so once you click on that you go inside this attribute and now you can add any attribute value here so for example we can add 10 liter or then we will assign the url slug as 10 liter so now we have a new attribute term or attribute item that is 10 liter so let's go back in all products and we'll create a variable product now so let's click on add new all right so let's go ahead and copy details from here itself the product will be cooking oil here is a short description and then let's copy the sample text for long description and let's choose the category as food grains oils again and after that let's go ahead and add a product image 
and again we can also edit the permanent link or the url of this product and till now whatever steps we have done are same as we have done for adding a simple product but now we need to add a variable product so that we can have this shopping option here so for this one we need to change from simple product to variable product and now you see that the price section is gone we have the inventory option first so we will leave all of them as it is and under shipping as well we will leave as it is and under attributes now we will choose attribute as weight we click on add and now we will select what attribute we want to add so we have 5 kg maybe we have or it's an oil so i'll select a liter this time so we have one liter after that we have five liter and then we also have 10 liter so these are the three weight values we have assigned if you want you can add new from here so you can add a new attribute here it will be added here as well as in the attribute value section and after that we also choose option used for variables and visible on product page so this option will so these options will be available on the product page plus it will be used for creating variations so let's click on save attribute and now we see this option variations and we have an option here create variations from all attributes and then click on go so here it's a pop-up message that you are about to create these variations so it can maximum create 50 per round so let's click on ok all right so three variations added so under weight so under weight section we have one liter we have five and ten liter let's move this one up so so in the front end we will see one five and ten liter option so now if we expand this one liter let's click this and here you see it looks very much like a simple product where we can assign an image assign sku for this particular one liter product so let's go ahead and add an image for this one so let's say this is the image we are going to use so this will be only visible for one liter product you can assign a new sku here again we have the regular price option let's enter some price we have that in in stock all the other details you can enter or leave it as it is below that now we will enter the 5 liter detail so i leave the image as it is so if you don't add any image it will take the image of the main product so let's enter the price for this one as well all right let's scroll down let's go with the 10 liter again we will just enter the price and image will be selected as the main image so let's click on save changes all right so now all the three attributes are done and let's click on publish and let's open that in a new tab so this is our cooking oil image here and we have a weight attribute with the options to select which attribute we want to buy so if in case we choose one liter let's click this so now you see that the image got changed for one liter product if we select any other it will come back to the original image because we have not assigned any specific image for this 10 liter product same goes with 5 liter so it will stay here with the same image and if we go again with the 1 liter it will again change the image for that specific product and you can also see that once we change the attribute values it's also changing the final price so this is how you can add a variable product on your WooCommerce store so now we have added a simple product and we also have a variable product so let me just go ahead and quickly add few more products so that we can start designing the front end of our website so let me just come back in few seconds all right so now we have our products added in the woocommerce so now we can start designing our front end so let me just open the home page here so first of all we will assign a color scheme for this website then we will start designing our header so for that we first need to go to customize and here first of all we will go to general then we will go to colors 
And here we have three palette option here that we can create color palette for our website. So we will be assigning colors here. So for example, do you see that here is the light blue color in this background? So if we go ahead and select this color, you see that it's changing when I switch the color here. So we can assign any color. So we can assign any color with, that we want, like for this one. Like for this one, if I change it to red, you can see that this link at the bottom is now red instead of blue. If I change it to green, you see that it's now green. So this is how we can create three different color palettes for our website and use it as we need. So in order to create this color palette, there are a few options. You can manually add the color code here or you can take a look at ready-made templates available with Cadence theme. For example, if I select this one. So now you see that the color is changed. This is the background color and the orangish is the color for this link. So that's how you can use these ready-made uh, color scheme in Cadence theme. So we will be creating our own. So either we can enter the hash codes here or another way is we go to this folder and then import or export our color code. So if you want this color scheme to be added on any other website, all you have to do is just copy this code and then open the website where you want to import it and then just paste the code here. So if I go in the live website and click on general, then colors, as you can see, we have this green color palette. And number two, we have this orange color palette. And number three is our default blue color palette. So if I want to import this green color palette on my this website, so all I need to do is click on this folder, go to import export, and then just copy this color codes and come back to this website. And in import section, I'll click on import. And now we have the color green added to the color palette. In the same way, we'll go to palette two, we could click on this folder, copy the color code from here, come back to the website, click on palette number two, click on this folder, and then we will paste the color code in the import section and then click on import. So now the palette two is also added. So we will leave the palette three as it is for blue color and we will keep the green color palette for rest of the design scheme. So let's click on publish this one. So now we have added this color palette, how we will be using that. So for example, you see that we have side background here and below that you see a white color background and there is a planet icon, which means that this white color is coming from our universal color palette. So this is the color it's taking. So if in case I want to change this color, I can either drag this slider to select any color or I can choose any color from this color palette and this will update the color of my site background. And you see that this planet icon stays here because we are using color from the global color palette. If in case I use any other color, then you won't see this planet icon again because right now this color is not in the global color palette. So here we come back to white. So now the site background is white and it's coming from the global color palette. And if in case I change anything here in the global color palette, it will be updated automatically on all the places where I have used this color from the global color palette. So keep that in mind before you update any of this color in your palette, because that will change everything on your website. So let me just redo that for the white color. And if you go to buttons, here we have the text as white, background color is green. So just to show you how different color palettes are applied. So let's go to our header section. So we come back here in the header section. We see we have three rows which can be used to create our header. So right now our logo is on the left hand side and our primary navigation is on the right hand side. So if you want our logo to be in middle, we can just drag and drop it in the middle. Our logo will show in the middle. So that's how you can use these drag and drop feature from Cadence theme and add anything. 
for example if i want to add a search feature here so i'll just drag and drop this search icon i will drop it next to the menu navigation menu and now you see we have a search icon here along with that if i want to add a cart icon i can just drop that as well so if i click on publish so now we have a cart icon as well so this is how i can add different elements on my header and now let's go ahead and change this logo we click on this wrench icon and now we will select our logo image we will upload that here is our logo image let's open that all right so we don't want to crop it let's skip so we will skip cropping so now we have an image as our logo but it's also showing the text so let's choose layout as logo only not logo and title but if you want to do something fancy you can always select logo title and the tagline so this is how it works but right now we will only choose logo image and let's reduce the size of the logo a bit so i'll keep it 150 and here you can change the site title you can enter any seo friendly text here and in the same way you can also add a site icon which will be a favicon icon which will be visible on the browser window so you can go ahead and do that so this is the title of the page so we will get rid of this in a minute but we come back to our header and we will move our primary navigation to the center here and on the top row we will have the logo and on the right hand side we have the search and the cart icon just like we have here let's drop it next to the cart we also need an option here where people can go and log in in their account so we will add my account link here so for that we can drop a button from here or even we can just uh, click on this plus icon and again we can have this button option here so we can choose that so right now it will be added in the end so let's go ahead and bring it back here and here you can change any text and the url for my account is whatever your website url after that add my dash account so this will take the visitor to the my account page and if they are not logged in they will land on the login page you can also change the settings here like if you want this button to be big and if you want to add any background image or oh, i'm sorry any background color so right now we want it transparent so that it will look a bit clean so i will also change the size and i can also change the font size so if you want you can increase or decrease the font size a bit so this is how it will look and if you go in the mobile view so this is how it will look in mobile view so this is the logo on the left and we have this drawer on the right hand side so this is how the menu will pop out from the right hand side so but the problem is that we are missing our search card and the button so let's go ahead and add all of them so we come back here we click on this plus sign we click on cart so now our cart icon is here now let's go ahead and click again click on search console i mean the search toggle so now we have the search toggle back again but we don't have any space left so we need to add the my account button as well so what we will do is we will take this drag and trigger the menu here and we will drop it next to our logo and if we click here the drawer is opening from the right hand side which looks a little bit odd so we click on this wrench icon or we can click on this wrench icon here and we will change this drawer from slide out from right to left so now if we click on this the drawer will open from the left hand side and now we can go ahead and add our button here so this is our my account button let's drop it first element here so this is how the header will be laid out in the mobile devices so let's go ahead and get rid of this background green color so let's go ahead and click publish and on the home page we are anyway not going to use this title let's get rid of this complete section so for that we need to go to the page so here we are in the home page we don't have any content yet 
But here, if we click on this page setting, we can disable the page title and then click on update. Let's refresh it again. And now our page title is gone. So that's it for this header. We have the logo on the left. We have the menu in the middle and on the right hand side, we have the account card and the search icon. All right. So we are in our pages section and we will click on this home edit so that we can start creating our home page. So if we take a look at our reference website, we have this slider on the very top. So we will add this first and here we will only use the Gutenberg editor. So first we will type in this row layout. We will make it full width and then we will select one row. We click on this block and we will add advanced gallery. Now we will upload the images for our gallery. So these are the two images we will choose. So right now they are showing as thumbnail. This is not what we want. So we go to this wrench icon here. And then we will select this single slider image. And now it's showing as a slider, but it's looking too huge. So here in the image ratio, we will choose as landscape four by one. And after that, we will choose the image size as full. So that's how the full image will be visible in high resolution. And now you can see that this is kind of a slider or a carousel. And below that we have the carousel settings. You want this carousel to be autoplay. You can click on that. So if I want to add a link here, so I will choose custom. And then here I can enter any link. For example, let's say we want to redirect this to our fruits and vegetables. And we can also open that in a new tab, which we won't. If we click on next and for this one, let's say we want to redirect that to our oil category. So we click here again, paste the URL. So let's update the page again. And if we refresh the front end, here we have the slider image but somehow we are getting this gap here. So let's get rid of it. So for that, we need to come back to this row layout. We select this row layout from this bottom breadcrumb. And here we will select the margin and padding. Right now we selected zero instead of 25 and same goes for this section. We will select all the settings as zero margin and zero padding. After that, we go to our page setting and here we have an option for vertical padding. So we will disable that. Let's click on update and let's try to refresh the page. And now you see that the margin is now very small. So for the rest of the margin, we go to customize and here in the general, we go to layout and under this general layout, we scroll down to single post box spacing. So right now it's showing two pixel all around. So let's go ahead and make it zero. So now we have no spacing here. Let's click on publish. And if we come back to our homepage, so this is how it looks. So this is our homepage slider. And after that, we will add these three elements here. So let's go to our home page. We click on this row layout. And after that, we will add another row layout here. And this time we will choose three column layout. And let's copy this text. And we will choose advanced headings. We'll type in this heading. We'll change it to F4. And after that, we copy this text from here and let's paste it here. We will change it to advanced heading again. And then we will turn that to paragraph. So if we change that to advanced heading and then switch it to paragraph with that, we will be able to access all the settings that are available in the cadence blocks. So that's why I change it from normal paragraph to advanced heading and then switch it to paragraph. After that, we select this column or this section. So we select this from this breadcrumb here. And from 
this settings, we will add some padding, maybe five pixel. And let's add a background image. We will upload the image. All right, let's select it. Okay, so this is how it looks. So we need a little bit of space on the top and the bottom. So again, we will select this section. We will go down in the padding. We will click on this box so that we can enter individual values. So for the top, we will add 15 and for the bottom, we will again add 15. So let's add a bit more. Let's go ahead and add a little bit of padding on the left hand side. So we select this section. We come down to padding. So from the left, we will add 15. Let's click on update. Let's refresh it again. All right, so now it looks much better. So let's duplicate this section. So we select this section. We copy the style. We come again here and then we will paste style. So all the paddings and the background image will be added. Now we just need to change the background image. So let's upload it again. All right, so let's, so this is our banner. And again, I'll copy this text and then I will paste it again here. Also, I'll select this text here and then I'll paste it again. Similarly, I'll copy this style. I'll select this section and then paste the style. Now, now we're going to change this background image. All right, so these are the three sections. Now let's move on to the next section. That is this category text. All right, so we click on this row column here. We click on insert after. So now we can add another row after this. First select one column layout. We select advanced heading. We paste our content. We will align it to center. And after that, we will choose, so here we type in Woo. So we will get all the list of WooCommerce blocks. So here we will choose product by category. So let's say we want to show products from vegetable category. So we'll select this. Let's click on done. And all the products from this category will be listed here. And if we click on this block, we get some settings here. Either we can change the number of columns. So instead of three, we can have four, but we only, we only have three products in this category. So that's why it's showing only three. So let's go ahead and switch it back to three and it will show three rows. So I will change it to one. We don't want to show more rows. And here we have an option with what we want to show here. So we can show title, price, rating, add to cart. So if we click on update, let's see how it looks in front end. All right, so we have this option here and all of these products are variable products. So instead of add to cart, we see this select option. So if you don't want to show this, you can go ahead and turn it off from here. Let's click on update, refresh. And if you come back, we don't see that option now. So I think this is a good option. So I'll turn it on and I'll keep it as it is. All right, so we come back to our row layout. We will select this complete row layout with the heading as well as the products. We will duplicate this. And now we will copy the title of next category. We will change our text. And now we will change the selected category as well. So I will choose food grains and oils, click on done. And now we have another category. So once again, we will update that. And if we refresh it again, so this is the new category. So for this is a variable product. So we see this select option and this is not a variable product. It's a single simple product. So that's why we see add to cart option. All right. So if we come down, we have this section. So let's create this. So we come down to our page back again. We select a row layout. Now here we have the five icons here. I will only add four because if we keep it in even figure, it will be an easy rendering for the mobile view. So instead of five, I'll go with four. 
So I'll select this four column and for this complete row, we will add a background color and we will make it full width. Now let's go ahead and add image block in the first column. We have an image here. After that, we will also, we will align this image in center. And let's go ahead and copy this text. So we will change it to advanced heading. Then change it to H4. And from here, we will change the font size as 12 or maybe 14. And then I will select as bold. I will assign, I will align it to center. And after that, I will add this text here again. Once again, I will change it to advanced headings. I will change it to paragraph. And I will change the size to 12 pixel. Align that to center and done. I'll click on update. Let's refresh the front end again and we have our icon here and in the same way we will add rest of the icons all right so this is how it looks in the front end and if i select this row and if i choose this mobile display option so I can change this layout to this two column grid. So this one looks much better. And I'll change it back to desktop. Click on update. And now refresh it again. And if I try to view that for a mobile view. So this is how it will look on the mobile phone. And rest of the design is also looking pretty decent for mobile as well. All right. So we come back to our home page. And now we need to add this popular category section. So now we will copy this popular category text. We add just a advanced heading. Paste the category text here. Align it to center. After that, we will add another row. And this time we will choose six. So this is the layout we will choose. And then we will select this text from here and we will choose advanced heading and paste the content all right so let's change it to advanced heading let's change it to h5 or maybe p tag we don't need any heading now let's make it bold color will be from our theme all right so now we copy this text from here and after that we will paste this text and if we select this section we go to the settings so we will add 20 pixel from the top maybe 5 pixel from right 30 pixel at bottom and 5 pixel to from the left after that we will add a background image all right let's upload it all right let's select it let's go ahead and change the font size so i think 13 pixel will be good enough let's update it and let's see how it looks all right so it looks a little bit small we can expand it a bit and now if we select this section come back to the padding and we will make it 10 from the top and 140 from the bottom let's update it again and let's see how it looks now. All right, so this is how it looks. And we have a slight border at the right hand side. So let's go ahead and add that as well. So we will click on this section. And in the border color, we will add this solid green. And we will only add this border as one pixel on the right hand side. Let's click on update again. And maybe we can reduce the bottom padding a bit. Let's see how it looks. Let's refresh the front end. All right. So this is how it looks. And now we will go ahead and repeat the same in all the sections. So first of all, I'll select this section. I'll copy the style 
and then I will paste the style on all the columns so that we will have all the margin padding and background image ready. Now first let's go ahead and update all the images. Alright, so now let's go ahead and copy this title. Alright, let's change it to advanced heading and we will copy the style and we will paste the style here. So once again we will copy the list and then we will paste it here and let's copy this and then we will choose advanced heading. Same goes with next. We will choose advanced heading and paste our content. All right, so now we are done with all these sections. And if we refresh the home page, that's how it looks on the front end. So I'm just leaving it as it is with this sample text. So we can easily go ahead and link all these categories on in this list. After that, we will add this section where we have this uh, contact information and this payment uh, cards image here. So let's do that. Add a row layout and we will add four column layout again. And for the first one, we will add icon box or icon list. So this is the text. After that, we have this number. So we will keep the first text as bold. Now on the right hand side, we go ahead and change the settings. So we will change the font size to 12 pixel or maybe 13. And after that, we will change the icon. So here we will change it to a phone icon or maybe this one. And after that, we will choose the icon color as green from our global color palette for the text color we will also choose the same green color and I think we will change the size to 14 so now it's a little bit much visible and for the icon size we will change it to 50 uh, maybe 30 let's update that and let's copy this icon from here and let's paste it in the next section and this time we will change the text to email us. All right, so here we can enter the email address for the store and let's change the icon. So this is the icon we will use. And now in this section, we will add a text. We will choose advanced heading. We will type in follow us and we will change it to a paragraph. We will make it bold and font size will be 14 pixel and heading color will be from the global color palette green instead of up it should be us right we will align it to center and after that we will add few icons so let's go ahead and change it to facebook so here is the facebook icon and icon color will be green and let's make the margin five from the right and five from the left here is the place where we can paste our url and let's change it to 30 pixel and now we will add one more icon or maybe three so let's add three icons here so here are the three icon settings so we go to the second one and we just need to enter the URL that we need to point. And here is the icon. So let's change it to Instagram. And in the same way, we go to the third icon setting. We change this one maybe to Pinterest. Again, we have the option for link. And if we select the main row, we will choose the alignment as middle. Let's update it again. So here are the icons. Now if you see we have this gap here. So this is looking a little bit odd. So we go back here and in this text we go to settings and here in the spacing settings we set the margin bottom as zero. And if we refresh the front end again 
So now it's gone. It's looking much better. And in the last column, we will add an image. We will upload the image. And let's update again. And let's refresh the front end. So this section is also done. Now it's time to create this footer. All right, so in order to create our footer, we need to go to customize. And here we have an option for footer. And in the same way we created our header, we have the same options in footer as well. Like we have these three rows where we can drag and drop various elements. Right now we only have the copyright information here. So we will change this to something like this. So first of all, let's go ahead and click on this copyright information. And you see that it's showing the copyright and the year. And after that, it's taking the site title and then the theme credit. So here we will leave the site title as it is. And if you want, you can add your own credit here, something like this. So we go to design and here we will change the font size as 12 pixel and you can play around with the color as well. So I will only change the font size. I think 12 pixel will be good enough. And let's go to this bottom row. And we only have one column layout here. And we just reduce the bottom spacing. It will make it full width. And after that, we have the footer background option. So let's add our background color. And after that, we have, and above this, we will add our categories and other information. So we will select this and we will select widget option. So let's go ahead and click on settings for this widget. And as per the latest updates in the widget, we can add normal Gutenberg blocks, which is really good. So we click on got it. And now we will start adding the blocks. We will start with this. So we will change it to advanced heading and maybe H4. And the font size will be 14 pixel. And the color will be green, not this green, the darker one. All right. After that, we will add list or maybe we can add menu directly. So we will add navigation menu. We will select top menu here. So now our menu is showing here. So if we go and click on publish and if we scroll down on the home page, this is how it looks. So let's go ahead and change the font size. In this we will and widget content, we will have the font size as 13 pixel. Right, let's publish that and let's refresh the front end again. All right, so this is how it looks. So instead of H4, it's looking a little bit big. So I'll select this and change it to paragraph. So this is how it will look now. So after that, we come back to this and we will add another widget here. So right now we have three sections. If we want, we can also have four sections. So right now I'll add one more widget here. And in the same way, we will start adding advanced heading. This will be the text. I'll change it to advanced heading, then to paragraph, then make it bold. And after that, I will add another menu or not menu. We can actually add our page list. So this is the page list that we will be adding here. So you can play around with all the widgets. So I'm just adding this one here. So for this title, I will also select the color as dark green. Let's publish that. And this is how it looks in the front end. And once that is done, we can go ahead and repeat this widget. So right now we only have three columns. So I go to this main row. And in the design, I will select four columns and then we can add one more widget here. And in the same way, we will add the title. So I'm just giving it a random text. We will select the color as dark green. And after that, we will select our page list and just click on publish. I forgot to make it bold. 
So for this, we can go ahead and choose this social media widget. So that is straightforward. We can go ahead and drop the social media icons here and it will show up here. But till now we are using the normal widget for our previous three uh, columns. So we will use that again. So we will drop another widget and then click on this range icon. And we will choose advanced headings. And then we will type in our text. We will change it to paragraph. Then dark green color and bold. All right. So after that, we will add the icons. So how about if we just go ahead and copy these icons so that we don't have to recreate everything again and link up again. So I'll go here and I'll select this widget and copy it. I'll copy this block and let's remove this. And if I paste it here, and now we have the social media icons to align them to left. All right, let's click on publish. And if we scroll down here, how it looks. So just to give you an idea, what can we place here? We can place any contact form here or anything else. We already have the social media icons here, so there is no point of putting back here. So this is how you can design your footer using these normal widgets. So now we go in the product page. Let's see how it looks. So with all our theme customization, the page almost looks pretty much ready. So let's see what options we have. We click on customize and we go to WooCommerce. We go to single product layout and here is an option for breadcrumbs. If we want, we can show them or hide them. And after that, we have the layout as well. So if you want, we have an option for layout like this, which will be a narrow layout with a small image here but I would prefer this one. And after that, we have an option for sidebar and content style. Right now it's unboxed. So you want, you can have boxed layout as well. So it depends what kind of color scheme you are using. So I'll select unboxed. We have an option for vertical padding. If we disable that, that will jump on top, but I'll keep it enabled so it looks fine. So now we are in the product element section. Here we have the category first. If we click on show this. So here is the product category. So let's hide this. We don't need it. And here is the product title. If you want to hide that as well. I mean, I'm sure you don't want, but just in case below that we have the price, we have the excerpt if we have that. And below that we have the add to cart. So we will choose a large size button. So this is how the button will look like. And let's select this option so that our button can be visible clearly. And below that we have extras option. So we can click on this extras. So this is how you can configure your extra options. So here you can enter any text. You can play around with all the icons and other stuff. And below that we also have the payment badge. So here it is. You can also play around with that as well. And below that we have the product meta. If we can hide that. All right. All right. Below that we have these tab structure layout where we have the reviews, additional information and product description. And we also have the relative product details. We have four columns, but because in each category we have three products. So that's why it's showing two here and one main product here. So you can increase or decrease the relative product columns from here. All right. So let's click on publish. So it's already in pretty good shape. So we can go with that. So let's go back and let's click on this category and see how the archive page looks like. So this is how the archive page will look like. We have the menu. We have the title of the category. Below that we have the product images. So if we go ahead and select this option, so if you want, you can show the title or maybe you can hide that as well. If in case you have a design like this, where your background is mixing up like this. So we can go ahead and design. We can go ahead and change it from here. So let's say we have this green color selected. So maybe we can choose a lighter shade for the title. So I'll copy this code. And so this color is not being used anywhere. So I'll select this one. And I will update this color in the global color palette. So let's quickly go back and in the general settings in the colors, 
this color is not being used so I'll select this green here. So now our menu and the title background will have a different color, right? So quickly go back to our category page, right? We go to WooCommerce, we have the product catalog. And again, we have the same options that we have seen on the product page. So right now it's looking perfect to me and we can go with that. If you want, you can play around with all the options available here. So I will leave it as it is. So let's click on publish. So this is our home page. And if you go to any product, here's a product. We have the options here. We can select that. And, and once we select the weight and then add to cart. All right. So once the product gets added, we can go to view cart. You can go ahead and apply a coupon code if you have and then click on proceed to checkout. And here is the normal checkout option. You can place your order. So if you go in any category page here, so this is how our category page will look like. And if you go to any product page, this is how the product page will look like. So this is how you can create your online grocery store using the free cadence theme and free cadence blocks. So if you like this video, then make sure you hit the like button and to watch more tutorials like this, then make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell so that you can get notified whenever we upload our next video. So that's it for this video and I'll see you in the next one.